recording. So uh, as I said, um, I would like for you to print these out. And so I would print this out and we're gonna do like a little deep dive in this one. So this one's the art teacher understands the skills. Marco Diaz, get down from there. <laughs> Sorry, the puppy is on the couch. I don't know. <laughs> He's less than a year old. I have a, a very old dog and a puppy and it's- Aww. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, let me see. Um, skills. So they're they're needing for us to understand both skills and techniques of the art process needed for personal and creative expression through the creation of original artworks in a variety of media. So you have to know all the different types of media. Not you don't have to know it completely and have it memorized and know like everything about pottery. But you might need to know, um, you know, some of the aspects of pottery. I think that there's like something called scoring when you're making pottery and you, you, you know, do lines and different and it creates sort of like a mesh netting on two different pieces of clay and then they stick together like better when they're not when they're not from the same piece but something as small as that just having like a working reference with um, with many of these and so if you'll look at it, it says variety of media. Let me get my drawing thing out. Because when you do a deep dive, you want to, um, you know, highlight important words and phrases. So you're doing skills and te techniques for personal and creative expression. And this is going to be through original works of art. So that's one of the very important things. It's not so, uh, this standard is not so much about you um, teaching about, the history of art or but it's it's like teaching them skills and specific techniques to help them produce their own original works of art in various media um and a variety of media and and you'll, you'll look over here and this is where it's listed and so um demonstrate and instruct this is your application of things over here so one of these is various media is repeated here, variety, various media, including, but not limited to drawing, painting, printmaking. And I remember doing this in my art classes. So it's really cool. I mean, I still actually, I could go get one for you for my high school art class. Um, and we did all sorts of original artwork. And my parents were so like, you know, extra that they like framed them, you know? And so I now have them <laughs> in my house. <laughs> And they're not super good, but they're kind of cool. And they're different media that I had never used before. Like for instance, one of them was printmaking. And so you think printmaking, making like a copy machine, but actually it's called, uh, there's different types, but um, the one that we did was called a litho, uh, no, line. I'm gonna have to look it up. Uh, it, it's either lithograph or linograph, but it's from a, a piece of linoleum and you you have sp particular tools and you're carving out of it your, your um, you know, whatever your image is. And then uh, after it's done, being carved you get and it's so you have to you, you do it so badly it not only takes skill carving the stupid thing but then when you're trying to <laughs> those that's not the artwork that you did the artwork in that thing that's not where it ends there's skill and technique to print making where you have to get like a tiny roller because you don't do these big things you, you do like uh, mine was not very large at all uh, in fact, mine's in the living room. He'll grab it for you. Um, and so you take whatever color paint um, and and roll it out on this on your ro little tiny roller. And then on the linoleum, you have to make sure that it doesn't get in the crevices of your artwork because you'll screw up the image, right? And so you have to make sure you only get the parts that are, you know, not <laughs> not scraped out. And so the first prints come out all messed up. The teacher has to re-explain, guys, don't put pressure when you're rolling. The technique of rolling it super gently where you're just barely kissing the top of the nylonium. I remember her telling me, <laughs> and I thought it was ridiculous. But so it was exciting. And, and it, uh, I think having such wonderful art teachers like um, built up and it's one of the goals of you know of teaks for art is to to build it did build up my creativity and so like it's something that I um found pleasure in not just art but all sorts of like fine arts and stuff like that um and so I try to do you know little activities like that with my with my 
kids all the time. And also English language arts teachers, I mean, obviously they're not gonna do printmaking, but they certainly try to, um, you know, whenever possible, like whenever we're doing even comprehension skills, you don't wanna write it in a sentence, draw a picture of what this meant. You know, some of our visual learners and, and, and that helps them understand their reading, even making that connection to, to those things. So construction, ceramics, fiber art, these are new things, um, electronic media, right? Even TikToks is a form of art, right? There is a skill and there's techniques to making it interesting and engaging as opposed to just, you know, taking up one whole video. Um, and so our job is to help the students develop those techniques. And so typically they will give you, for instance, I'll give you one and I, it, it probably could be used on the exam. So um, Ms. Sauceda's fourth grade art class is finishing or having difficulty with their printmaking process. You know, students um, loved the scraping portion and are having difficulties with the actual printmaking. Which of the following uh, suggestions or tips would be most appropriate for Ms. Sauceda um, to help her students be successful with printmaking. And I guarantee you it's going to be, don't smash this, the roller down when you're doing the print. You have, that's the technique. You have to be super, you know, but if you know a little bit about printmaking, if you read just even a little bit, I guarantee you someone's going to mention it if you're talking about printmaking as far as art uh, work is concerned. And so this is actually a really good segue for me to jump to um, how you're, you're breaking this down, writing notes whenever possible, uh, putting things in your own words, like helping them de develop those techniques through activities, through direct instruction, through demonstration of skills, through modeling, you know, so all of the different ways that we would help students. So having them do it, but also we can't just say, go off and scrape out of the nololeum and then paint out a, a, a thing and you'll be fine. And then after you do that, you have to stamp it. And so you can't stamp it too much and you have to make sure that you stamp it. It's a whole process. So um, knowing all the, you know, the little bits are just being familiar with it. So any of these that you aren't, oh my God, sorry. When you, you have to like get out of the whole drawing thing for it to go away, you can't just erase things. Okay. So, you know, as you're going through these and you're doing a deep dive, if you aren't super familiar with the various techniques, because look at what it says, you are to demonstrate and instruct students in the techniques. So what I would do is look up printmaking techniques for fourth graders, you know what I mean? Uh, but, but you don't even have to do a, a blanket, you know, huge um. Google search, which you'll have to read through and siphon through all of this junk. Um, Pinterest is literally a gold mine for educators. It's not a gold mine for any anything. Like you, you want a new haircut, you want some new fashion, you want to, you know, repaint your house. It has everything. But <laughs> professionally, because I've used Pinterest since its inception, you know, um, and, and you. It, it really became a haven for um, educators. And so you could find so many free ideas from brilliant expert teachers all across the world, actually. So what were we looking at? Um, look, here's one for ELAR. You've already, you've already, you know, passed that. So, but just for your classroom, they're having difficulty. You see that they're having difficulty, um, you know, decoding unintelligible words or not unintelligible, but like unfamiliar words. This is an excellent tactile, colorful, visual, you know, hands-on, I said tactile, but um, activity. So let's do uh, print making art. See, it already came up. Elementary. <laughs> <laughs> okay so um and so there's even these ones mine was really intricate mine was a, like a girl coming out of the ocean like walking out of the ocean with holding a baby a toddler's hand who had a note in his and it was all like <laughs> yeah, it, 
<laughs> I would have liked it if we did something cool like this, but this is really cool. And the kid, and it's appropriate to their grade level. When I did printmaking, I was like a sophomore or junior in high school. And so <clears throat> if you're doing it at the elementary level, you don't want for them to have to, we had already gone through scope and like whatever, and done all of these other things. And so I was able to create like a picture on a, on a linograph or whatever it's called. Um, but this is more appropriate for EC through six, right? We do things based on their interests. I mean, imagine if you were doing um, print emoji, I mean, print emoji, this exact thing with the printmaking and they chose their favorite emoji. You know, even if they did the poopy emoji, that's still funny and cute. And, <laughs> and you know, sometimes that's your favorite go-to emoji. It's just the way it is. Um, so, but you could look at um, ideas um, examples and, and like best tips for, for them. And there's even, I guess, different ways that you can do printmaking. Now I was talking about a very specific, this one's using scratch foam. So since I didn't do it in elementary, um, my elementary art programs were very poor growing up. <laughs> and I only realize that now just because we didn't do all of the cool things that apparently the rest of Texas was doing, you know, <laughs> and then when I went to high school, it was a, a, a fancier high school, you know, I went to med high. And so we had like fancier curriculum, you know, than just the rest of the, and so I, I, I sort of equated it to that, but anyway, um, they might have been using this foam scratch foam. So that might be a, like a particular um, thing that is found in, in elementary classes. And so what I would do for these um, is go through and just sort of investigate. I mean, you could also do, this is beautiful. This is lovely for kiddos. Um, let me look technique techniques for see it is lino lino cut so this is lino cuts this is step by step this is printmaking oh my god this is the hardest part of the whole process the image transfer because not only do you have to get the paint on like level then you have to smash it to like do the print you know for the paper on the stupid thing and then <laughs> like put pressure and make sure you don't smash it too much it's, um so it, it it's a it's difficult. Oh, wait, let's do for kids. And so um, you'll find best practices. You'll have what you'll find here is that art teachers themselves will put their best practices, right? And and most of it is free. Some of like the stuff you can buy on like um what is it called? Teach. Teachers pay teachers. And so that that's the um, one moment. I'm so sorry. Hi, Ms. Ferdial. I'm actually online right now doing EC through six fine arts. Yes, that's correct. Sure, absolutely. Oh, okay, see you soon. She's also needing this. So I that's why I answered her. Otherwise, I would have like, uh, uh, delete. <laughs> but I know, I know she needs this. So maybe like something like this, you might have to purchase it on like Teachers Pay Teachers. Um, but look, these are the different ways. I didn't even realize there were. So I only did the lithograph using linoleum, right? Um, but there are apparently different ways. And so if I were going to take the EC through six, I certainly would make sure that I knew the difference between lithograph, collagraph, etching, silk screen. Um, and we, I think we know, I, I know vaguely about silk screening, but only because of like t-shirts and stuff, monoprint. And, and we could even, we can even, um, just do a Google search and this one, um, stamp objects. Oh, look at this. This is like a visual of the different kinds. This is really cool. This is a really good um, graphic representation. And so as you're, you have your standards printed out, you would be writing the little collagraph, um, like we would go back to, I'm sorry. 
our faces are in the way. I'm gonna just go here. So we would go back here and like for, I would write notes all along here for things that I, you know, that I learned. And so for printmaking here, I'm gonna write the different types of like printmaking that I could possibly use. This fiber art, I saw um, a discussion of that just right now having, having to do with um, printmaking. Sorry, ladies. So, um, Elizabeth, I have been videoing it, so I sure. definitely encourage you to watch the beginning portion because I sort of made up a practice question that they might use concerning, you know, the tedious uh, skills and techniques needed, you know, and manifold ones needed in order to properly do a, a linograph. Um, so. This one, I guess they they take something and they make a collage, an artwork collage, and then they either color on that, just that part. I, I'm assuming they would know other co color on that. But see, the difference with the linograph, ladies, is that you see how the, the um, in this, the colograph, and I'm just assuming it's collage and graph together, colograph. Um, but the image is elevated. It's above like the dark space or whatever. You see the white space here? Like the image itself is elevated. The linograph is carved in. You carve into the linoleum. And so the picture is depressed into a, a flat space. So it's different. Um, I don't know if that's important to know on this. Um, so here you have monoprint with jelly palettes um and and so again i knew and had a surface understanding actually i had a pretty deep understanding i'm gonna give myself a little bit of credit here of printmaking but not even really what i thought was extensive about you know the dark space and the techniques and blah blah blah. that was only a one of the ways that you can print weight and probably the most expensive and difficult one i would imagine um so i think that um one of the best ways to study is to really dialogue with your standards go through them line by line and and really be honest with yourself. Am I super good about everything that has to do with ceramics? We're gonna look up fiber art right now because we're, we're doing a deep dive of just this one together, right? Um, and, and just the standard. So a deep dive is being able to do these things, demonstrate and instruct students, or being able to explain what it would be like if I was a, a teacher doing a holograph. Marco, shh. Um, I'm going to let them out real quick. I'm sorry. Excuse me. The joys of having a puppy. It's like having a toddler again. This is my analogy for dogs. Um, puppies under one year and like possibly up to two or like children and then you know the older dogs are like teenagers they mostly keep to themselves they just want to be fed and taken places and loved <laughs> but they want they do their own thing then that's what I have two of those so okay so let's go back to here we have block printing carve into a block this is much like the the lithograph stamp styrofoam print oh you draw with a pencil i bet you that's one you would that the example i gave you um it would probably be really advanced like the life for them to do the linograph in in the fifth grade or for whatever example i use it would be more appropriate as an art teacher to do um with kindergartners with second graders with third um, graders styrofoam print first and then after they could graduate to you know something a little bit more complex maybe the next year do uh, a colograph and the and then you know the the uh, lithograph if, if the funds are available so oh and, and here is again um remember I was talking about how um with the colograph the image itself was like above and um with the linograph it's carved in 
into it. So um, the, these are the different ways, but this is like the art of education, you know? So this is a bit advanced and I don't think you need to get that, that into it, but you certainly need to know that there are different types, right? Um, and this is where we were, what we were looking at, the different types. Stephanie, do we got that in the PowerPoint or anything that you sent to us, this information? Right now we're on, on Pinterest. I'm just um, doing a uh, modeling of how I want for you to use your standards to go look up particular things and, and gather data, you know, dialogue and then take it back. So you would take this and I, and I think it's important for you to write it down, right? There's something that happens in our brain um, when, when there's tactile movement, right? When there's more than just the reading or the listening to a particular thing. And so I think it's important for you guys to, um, and I'll take a screenshot of this actually and just like send it to you. Okay, below is the process of printmaking. The printmaking defined along with a few various types. The processes with solid line over around them will be done in this unit. Okay, this has nothing to do. Um, this is just somebody's curriculum, but let's just take a look. Printmaking. And this is an example, a really great way of um, defining something. And, and it's using a bubble graph or a bubble chart, you know. Um, and so we're defining, we're defining printmaking here, but then we're also defining these little mini things which help expand our definition of printmaking. Excellent um, vocabulary setup. An art making process where an artist can typically make multiples of an image. There are a variety of types of printmaking processes. There are a few described in each oval around this rectangle. And I'm gonna begin with the only one I am personally familiar with doing as a student. And I remember, as you know, it's one of my, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna get it for you. Next time we meet, I'm gonna have it next to me so that I can show you. But uh, the the lithograph, print made by using the concept uh, uh, that water and grease repel each other, made on either a porous line storm or metal paste. We used linoleum uh, and we carved out of linoleum, the linograph. And um, so that's one that I particularly did. And the printmaking process is supposed to help you make multiples of an image. But as I told you, lithographs are incredibly difficult this one is talking about an even and now i'm remembering the teaching that went into it they used to make them a long time ago when they started with grease like they would put grease to make the prints a long time ago we were using paint and, and, and whatever and it was still ridiculously difficult grease is slippery and even more smudgy than paint um so we talked about how it would even be more difficult back in the day making uh the line linograph um and I'm saying lino because we use linoleum and that's what my teacher referred to it as. But um, the, so I would be making notes on uh, EC through six, you know, printmaking techniques and just a little, a couple of words, you can write it on the back, um, you know, so that you have it all there. It's your, you know, whatever notes you want, you know, you can even, write, um, draw pictures, <laughs> you can ask questions. You know, if you're going through the, the, your deep dive of the standards and you have a question like Miss Alceda, I looked up like construction, but I didn't, I didn't understand like what exactly techniques used to produce quality artworks in construction would be used for elementary and, and something we could talk about. So dialogue with the text, annotate it, with things that you find as you go out uh, researching. And you're not only gonna be researching, you're also gonna be sort of um, in your own words, stating what you already know. So if you do know what something, you know, you don't have to go research it out. Like for instance, this, this uh, top uh, overarching standard, I spoke about how this standard too is about getting the kids excited um, about, personal artwork, giving them the skills and the techniques in order. Nobody's going to be excited about anything they don't know how to do well. Like if kids feel they are not good drawers, they're not going to like it when you have to do drawing. And so um, giving them 
the skills and the techniques needed in order for them to expand personal and creative expression. So this one is about original work, you knowing the skills and techniques of various medias and how to help support our students in, in I mean, they're not, everybody's not an artist. Printmaking is difficult, painting is difficult, drawing is difficult for some people. And so getting all students EC through six to participate and engage in um, original art production in a way that's fun and creates a lifelong artist. And like I said, I was lucky enough to have art teachers that did exactly what they were supposed to do um, with the minimal supplies and art stuff that they had. But, but there's so many ways for us, and as you'll find on Pinterest, for us to sort of circumvent um, funding, um, you know, limitations in art classrooms. Let's go back and look up fiber art. So you would go back, back and forth, back and forth um, from that. Well, you wouldn't have to go back and forth because you would have printed it out and you'd be writing on it. So I only have to go back and forth. Um, let's do, what was it? Fiber art? Is that what it was? Fiber art. I'm just assuming it's art with fibers. Elementary? Wow, I'm, I'm like, maybe there's a, okay, no, that's here. So, oh, with yarn. I've seen that. Oh, yeah, me too. See, this is something we definitely mm -hmm. did. In fact, I have my son's fiber art on my, on my wall. He's <laughs> 14 right now. I know. He's 14, <laughs> and he made it for me, like, in first grade. It's with a, pa it's with a, a small, like the cheapest of, but because when I see that, I'm sure the teacher bought it herself. Um, <laughs> like it was a paper plate and she, you know, poked holes in it and they did, they did an ojo and it's so beautiful. It's on my wall in my bedroom. I promise you it's like, it's like I have Picasso in there. I still have stuff everywhere, but yeah. Um, and he makes fun of me like, oh my mom, you put it, you put that up, but look how beautiful these ones are. <laughs> Um, so they can glue it down. They can do the ones like like my son did, where they where they actually like poke holes into a paper plate or some sort of plate. So many uh, cardboard loom, very cool and sort of cost effective. Oh, this is what it's like. Mm -hmm. So I have one of these, and he laughs at me. Isn't this beautiful? <laughs> where is this? This looks like it's in a museum. I wish. Okay, DIY art elective. So it wasn't an art museum, but still, I feel like it, it could be, you know, and they do some beautiful things in the classroom with these uh, fiber arts, fabric wrap sculpture art for kids. There's so many ways that you can do different um, things, but let's see. I'm trying to look for one. There's a lot having to do with the fabric weaving. And uh, my daughter did a fabric weaving with yarn. And that one, I saved it for a very long time. I don't know what happened. Right? She's 17 now. She's a senior. So some things get lost. I have five, I have five children. So but I, her artwork is littered throughout my entire house. She's a, a huge <laughs> artist. Yeah, she's a she's a big big time artist. So literally in my my youngest daughter's room, like almost all the artwork, I would say like 90% of the artwork that's there is my oldest daughter's. And then <laughs> some of the artwork that she does with them. This is beautiful. My so, middle okay. one is super artsy and we have art and paint everywhere. Yeah. Like my brand new house has art, has paint on the tile floors. Yes, absolutely. Um I I totally understand that. That's that's my house completely. Like this is very cool and easy. Burlap is very cheap, and then just the different um, colors. In fact, I am gonna save this to do with my kids on the weekends. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, my my two littlest ones. Um, okay, so we we know what what fiber art is. Um, it's anything doing with fibers, right? So we're gonna go back, or you would write on your paper. Fiber art is anything having to do with fibers. So like some of those were pieces of cloth and that's a <clears throat> uh, one of the ways I've seen actually one of my interns 
uh, I didn't know it was called fiber art. That's not what she called it, but that's what you would want to call it in the classroom, actually. You want to explain this is a type of art. And maybe I just missed it on the day I went to go uh, visit her, but they were weaving with stuff like this and they brought um a whole bunch of like old shirts or clothes that were donated and so they didn't have to buy any you know whatever colors they wanted they cut um from the old clothes the donated clothes uh to the classroom and they had a whole bunch of different you know colors and shirts and whatnot so go back jot your notes um let's take a look at construction for elementary Oh, okay, well, art, activities, art, construction theme, no, construction theme, elementary school, no, that's not what we're looking for, right. okay, so, this is really cool, and it's also STEM challenge, man, this is cross-curricular, anytime you can do cross-curricular, <laughs> you win as a teacher, this is, <laughs> like, science math uh, you know it's it's amazing um and it's construction the students and the kids love this in fact there's a a um video game like an app and it and you do that you have to like construct the course or whatever and you have to get your little person across and so you really like they don't know it my daughters would play it when they were little and they didn't know that they have like the laws of physics and the way, you know, if you do your thing curved up so much, mama, you're just going to go up and then go back down. You have to do it to where you, you're shooting off. And so <laughs> the ideas of construction and Play-Doh, brilliant, brilliant idea. And it, and it ties in, you know, science, math, amazing. Is that like when they did, my daughter did a project, it was for GT, where they had to uh, build a bridge out of popsicle sticks? Yes, very that, similar. That be the same thing? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. And that is construction via elementary, you know, as an as an art project. That that's what that teacher was doing. Um amongst other things, right? Uh, all sorts of lessons just in that lesson that you told me, team building if they were working in groups, measurement, uh counting, number set. I mean, just all sorts of stuff within that art, you know, or project. Um Building a roller coaster. Now, this is a really cool activity. Just using construction paper. Very cool. So you can even like, uh, let me go back to this one right here. And like this lady or person, um, I'm just going to follow them science and stem activities like hey I, like i said if you do cross curricular you just win the day um you help the students gain prior knowledge and make connections so that learning is not in isolation and it i'm telling you magic happens in the brain when that happens there are particular things that we know that science tells us need to happen or or the best case scenario for learning to take place true learning where you can go and uh, take that knowledge and synthesize it with new knowledge and create something new or you can go back and retrieve it and so uh, anytime you can cross curricular and stem does that really well and if you can make it having to do with arts fine arts in in ways and so winter science here's a science the school escape room this is cool it's back to school what a fun thing um now i wish i was an elementary teacher i that's the only uh <laughs> they're the only grades i haven't taught is ec through six you know and I, that was a very super on purpose choice because before i graduated from college before i finished I think my senior year my tia who was a second grade um teacher we had to have surgery and uh, I was home for the holidays because we got out earlier than the school. And she asked me if I could sub for her. No problem. I'm going to do this stuff. I'm ready for it. 
holy <laughs> shnikes I was not ready that I was young and had pep in my step and those second graders at it was in Brownsville <laughs> at Russell Elementary and um I went to Russell Elementary and and so as a <laughs> Yeah, as a student. And so, man, I went home and I told my dad, dad, those kids, they're like, I'm, ex I was, it was like 430 because we was in elementary and got out earlier. And I was like, I'm, I'm going to take a shower and go to bed. Like I was so exhausted. I had never been so exhausted. <laughs> I had been through tennis tournaments. I had been like, when you're trying to keep 28 people safe, you know what I mean? Yeah. Learning, not messing with each other and it's just like I didn't even know I had no pedagogy experience at the time just with what I learned from my family so uh yeah when I when I became a teacher I was like yeah seven through twelve like seven through twelve <laughs> and that's what I did I did seven through twelve but um now now I, I really now that my kids uh you know my last two babies are in elementary and I realized just how fast it goes I, I, you know, maybe I should go and, and do elementary school. So I would definitely follow, uh, and I'm already following this person. So follow, you know, when you get good ideas, you know, make an account, build your um, pin boards so that you have these things all ready for you later when you're actually in the classroom. So you're, and, and in that way, you're not right now, just studying for the exam and 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 which makes me happier because I like hate teaching to the test it's a thing I've always hated even when I was a teacher I don't teach to the test I'm going to teach you how to read and analyze and you know and so right now I'm teaching you how you would break apart your cheeks and the different things your students have to do and uh, which brings segues very nicely to our the cheeks right so we looked at the standards in depth and how I want well, I went to the wrong one Okay. Um, but don't forget or sort of um, overlook the importance of the, uh, the teaks, right? So we'll go to the kindergarten teaks and look at the like particular things. And so we need to identify elements of art, including line. And I remember when my daughters, they just did this, you know, and they came back from when they had art class because it's specials and they rotate. Um, you guys know that. But they came back with like different, they had done different lines, squiggly lines and, you know, textures and different, um, you know, repetition, different patterns that they made just with like stamps, you know, to learn. Um, using or create artworks right so we're gonna do express thoughts and ideas creatively while challenging the imagination fostering reflective thinking and developing disciplined effort and progressive problem solving skills i'll give you an example um last year i had an art teacher in houston my she was Thank goodness. But I think all of my students are fabulous. Like I literally do. Um, even my adult, you know, even my adult teacher students, but she was phenomenal. So um, one of the things that she did, and it was during Halloween, very, very cool. She had the students um, do self portraits in the, um, in the style of Tim Burton. So they looked at like that's they, cool. it was amazing the students knocked <laughs> out of the park her artwork wall it was like should have been in a museum like it was <laughs> amazing I have a picture of it I'll look for it but I was floored her student I was like this could be a show this is terrifying like what and um <laughs> but they did such a good job bringing out different things about quirks about themselves to really create a Tim Burton character it was incredibly cool and it was something that she was able to like show them or they many of the kids had already seen like uh Tim Burton type film so they are familiar with that like my girls are in first and second grade and they can tell a Tim they can spot a Tim Burton anything from like a mile away they they know Tim Burton as like a maker they've connected you know Edward Scissors hands like everything that he has been involved in um 
because we talk about it and they have older siblings, but many of the kids, um, she gave direct instruction. And so the, her direct instruction about the technique and the types of things that he does in order to create characters, like always having like off, you know, like uh, one eye is slightly larger than the other, you know, or like um, just she knocked it out of the park. And she did it with many grade levels. I was just very, very astonished. But she made a connection to culture. And he is an artist in every sense. I mean, literally in every sense. We have a book of poems about him. It's hysterical because it's so him. And there's also drawings that are so him. Um, and we found it in a used bookstore once and we had to have it. Uh, but he's an artist. And so they they analyzed him as an artist. The kids watched clips of videos, look, looked at different characters, analyzed. It was amazing. So there's so much that you can do with your students. Make sure that you go through um, and see what is needed in each grade level, EC through six, right? Early child. So the, um, kindergarten and in kindergarten they need to um let me see do, 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 do. here it is use a variety of materials even in kinder to develop manipulative skills so we're helping them with their you know fine motor skills while engaging in opportunities for exploration through drawing and if you're drawing every day in art class that's not fun i'm sorry it just it isn't um, and so you have to mix it up with them and have these projects, you know, that Tim Burton project was huge and it was amazing. And, but a lot of instruction went on, you know, she had, uh, mini lessons and, you know, they watched little videos and all sorts of stuff, uh, mixed in with other projects, construction, artwork, constructing artworks, uh, remember, like with construction paper or those other examples that we looked at, sculpting, sculpting, including model forms. And it just makes me laugh because not all of the kids are are like gifted, you know, like um, my 14 year old who his his uh, fiber art is gorgeous and hanging on my wall. And also I kept <laughs> his sculpture from elementary, but I thought it was a polar bear or a bear of some sort. And every time I say that to him, cause he's like, he tells me like, mom, why do you still have this? And um, <laughs> I'm like, I like it, you did so good. It looks just like a polar bear. He's like, it's not even, that's what it wasn't, it wasn't supposed to be that. <laughs> so, well, what is it? what it's supposed to look like. I forget what it is. I'm gonna have to ask him when he gets home. <laughs> um, but I also have it here and it doesn't at all look like it, but I don't care. It's, he made it with his hands like, and it looks <laughs> like a bear. So I see it and other people think it looks like a bear too. Um, but they're fun things for the parents and for the students. They're fun activities for them um, to learn. So make sure you go through each of these by grade level we're going to do another grade level. We're just going to skip up a little bit and go to fourth grade. Just know. And then uh, Fine Arts incorporates all that stuff. Same thing. Same four basic strands. Foundations, observation and perception, creative expression, them creating themselves as one whole strand. That's how important it is. Historical and cultural re relevance and critical evaluation and response. And uh, we didn't read it, but I, I sort of read it as we were talking because I'm ADHD, but um, it said that, you know, with the kindergartners that they even have to critique their own. So we want them to be self-assessing and critiquing their work, which it's hard, you know, for a little kid to critique their own stuff, you know, <clears throat> but we have to begin the process and why, why we do that, because there are uh, correct elements in, in this, just like there are... <laughs> correct you know um processes and um theorems in math you know and and you know we have to we must judge it like that just because there isn't um like a a definite answer like two plus two is four so we know if it's right or wrong there's a way to tell if a particular type of art is right or wrong or good or bad in the traditional sort of critique sense and so that's 
that's the idea that that we have to sort of implement to the students and and art and theater all of the fine arts really a lot of it is subjective right and so when you're grading these things you must have a rubric in place right so that would might be a question um concerning fine arts that you you can't just say like oh i love his little ojo or it looks like a bear he gets like a but if he if he wrote that he was trying to do like the leaning tower of Pisa and it looks like a polar bear stretched out then then the art teacher knows that he didn't hit his mark and possibly several things were so on a rubric he would have a particular grade I mean we're not going to be so critical of kindergartners or first graders with their sculpting but we're certainly there is going to be a rubric for mastery there has to be we have to measure their progress so, Stephanie, I have a question for you now that you say rubric. Um, uh, like my son in history, and, and this is there's those as future teachers. Um, so my son is having a hard time with uh, history. Right? So I tell him, can you put them, can you put him to do like a checklist? Because maybe he's not under, if you put him a checklist, he'll get the work done because he has a 60 in history. Right. And history is not a place to get a 16. We know that. That is expected in reading, math, the core subject. Right. So they were like, well, no, they're like, he just needs to copy it. I said, yes, but you cannot assume that the kid's a visual, I mean, an auditory learner. He had, right. he needs a visual. Like, you know, if, if he's not under, if you've had to repeat the same thing over and over again and show him, so is it, it possible is, for them to provide like a checklist? Absolutely say, sir. I know that most students can, you know, take directive orally. Some people need to see it on the board and some people need to have a piece of paper you print it out what is the harm with giving multiple avenues provide them with the task broken down on the board and a printout for everybody so they can have it with them to refer to or to check off that not only is providing differentiation of instruction by providing right. different you know like modes of uh, modalities of learning but you're also um modeling study habits and like planning you know what I mean like giving them a little checklist so that they can be um, responsible for that you know what I mean I feel like it's a very lazy thing to be like oh he can just copy down like please can you go the extra step for my son who is clearly struggling in your class before I speak to your principal like oh yeah <laughs> I was there for over an hour I'm like Cause they're like, cause he has anxiety, you know, and he has asthma and all this. So he, they're supposed to be given like extra time and stuff like that. He's on a five or four plan. And right. they're like, well, it's cause we would like for you to take him back to get reevaluated uh, for the anxiety. I'm like, why? Anxiety is anxiety. It's not going to go away tomorrow. It's not going to go away in two years. It's going to be there forever. You know, it runs in the family. And um, so they're like, we're trying to blame everything else instead of helping him in the classroom. And I'm like, that's how I want to be a teacher because when you've already done other stuff like special ed like me you start to understand okay maybe and I said well what happened to your informal assessment why is the teacher not walking around and seeing what he's doing like right you no know, it's like you don't assume that the kid knows it you're supposed to be going around and checking you and never it. assume the kids know it and in fact she doesn't even have to assume she knows it because his grade is a 60 and, yeah. and I would tell my students and my parents, my success is literally contingent on your success. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. I feel that still to this day, my success as a teacher of teachers, as an instructor of teachers, is depending on my ability to help you. And so if you need one-on-one -on -one or more visuals, it is literally my job to, you know what I mean? Like the, it's just uh, not everybody had um, thorough pedagogical instruction you know what I mean like a lot Texas teachers has been around as long as teacher builder they are a massive program they they have thousands of interns a year and I end up having to tutor them they pay me private money $120 an hour for my tutoring services um or use my my online videos for free and email me thank you so much Texas teachers never talks to me I've never spoken to an instructor and teacher builder pays for y'all to have access to me you know what I mean so it's just it's a totally, it's a, it's a totally I said, different thing I know because of my my I'm doing the teaching certification and I'm going through the modules and I'm, I'm doing the tutoring to pass my EC through six and I can't wait to get to get there because you see it's like it just really pisses me off that these teachers nowadays 
they don't go that extra mile for the kid. And it's like, you see that he's struggling. Like, oh, he had a 30, mind you, but they already know, okay, 30, when it goes out on the progress report and mom's going to call me. And sure enough, she says, I work with him a day before, but then my son's like, mom, she's never here. So we, we're expected to know what to do. So that was another concern. So the assistant principal, when she saw me, she's like, I don't want to deal with this lady no more. Like, well, no, because you're put on the spot and you're responsible for the kids learning. Yeah, you know, so um, <laughs> I just wanted to ask that because they kind of said, well, no, it's because he has to pay attention. I I was like, man, like they're just this close to me reporting him to TA because they're violating his rights. First of all, teachers don't even have a copy of his 504 plan. They don't even know he's on it. That's crazy. And that's a problem. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, it's a problem. Yeah, that is a problem. I'm so sorry to hear that. And you know, and it's not all teachers. There are so many amazing teachers that go there, but that, but, but Texas teachers does turn out a lot of unprepared teachers who literally didn't know you have to constantly be collecting data. We don't just give six grades for the grade book. And many, many uh, districts will do that. They'll only have like, you only need this many grades in this in marking period. Those are not the only assessments that you should have. You should be doing daily, uh, even if you don't write them down, walking around, like, is he under, are they understanding? Are they talking about it? Like, it's not a just for grade transactional, transactional thing. And so a lot of the teachers that, that were mass produced by, um, by some of the particular I don't, Texas teachers, and that's a, throw anyone under the bus but the guy that owns it he doesn't he doesn't even have any experience in education it literally is just a big business like they they knew that like there was a need <laughs> for teachers and they just jumped in and and they literally don't talk to anyone so it's pretty crazy but, and the thing is is I'm not just bashing them because I work for a competitor it matters you know what I mean the kids go to class and then my kids ha have had teachers that are Texas teachers, interns, and my own children, because they have listened to hours over the last, you know, uh, six years of me teaching teachers, like, they're like, mom, this teacher doesn't even want to instruct. She just said that, like, we could just refer to the stuff she made for COVID online. And I'm like, excuse me, you are there. We're not going to be using the videos you made. Like, the kids have questions, and she's like, watch the videos online that I made during COVID talking about <laughs> like yeah, no that's so us that we're going to become teachers we need to be very careful because um try to find out you know about your students as soon as you can do them formal testing mm -hmm. so that's why i like the ec through six because you get to start learning the foundation skills like my son right now in kinder you know um i they're saying well he's struggling to do this okay well what are the interventions you're doing you know like right. i don't want my son to go to first grade and not be reading side words so i'm glad i'm learning all this <laughs> absolutely you know go in there and say i don't want to hear i mean he is how old is he what grade is he in i have one but the one that i said is uh my kinder one and but okay. there's 20 and kids in the classroom I'm like for kinder that's a lot <laughs> it is a lot and they should I mean I can't imagine that they're just like sitting there blaming a kindergartner I mean like we already know the 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 challenges and the spunk that you need for kindergarten you know what I mean um in that super big growth area where they're learning and then add anxiety at all I mean it's just I would go in there and say, I, I appreciate your opinion, but I, I hope you can appreciate my request that, that you, instead of, you know, posing things that he's doing wrong, I want to know what you've tried to do to support him, because it's my understanding that, that you, there should have been several things that have taken place before, you know what I mean, in, in any of the, the situations, you know, um, support it is our job to identify need it, it, I can't imagine going into a parent teacher meeting and saying well it's just because he's this and that like that's a not productive and b what are you going to do to help him 
I'm, I'm all for whatever it is that you're going to do to help him. But I, I need to know what, what plans you have to make it to where he is mastering and thriving, because that literally is your job. He needs to be mastering and thriving. It's kind of the law, you know, and, and we know he's not now, and you've already identified areas of need. I want to know what are you doing to support his areas of need that you have identified? Yeah, no, I already addressed that because I work for special ed. And when they, at first last year, they wanted to refer him. I'm like, what have you done? Show me the interventions. And it was just word of mouth. I said, no, I want them on paper. Show me right, what absolutely. you have on paper. Don't tell me that you've done this, you've done that. So when I got the diagnostician on board, uh, you know, he's like, I'm not going to assess him because he's, first of all, he's in pre-K. What am I going to assess? I mean, he doesn't need it. Y'all need to work with him. Um, exactly. So they brought something from the doctor. So yeah, it's just amazing. We have diverse kids in the classroom and and learning about all this, like the fine arts. I didn't even know all this was part of the fine arts. I haven't got there yet. <laughs> I'm on ELAR. Okay. Well, you can go back and, and rewatch it. Um, so as you're going through these, you know, if I were, um, what, are these saved? These ones are created. Oh no. Create an idea pin. But um, so let me see, cultural competence, dry erase board. What is this one? I have no idea what I put in this. Sorry, these, I'm trying to find a good example. Um, so, you can, and this is like a broad one that has all bunch of stuff in it, but you could do one for a, a board for art, or you could even get more specific, like do, and this is like organizing it to do list. You can keep notes here, but you can also um, organize them by particular like um, thing that you're looking at. So we looked at, sorry, we were looking over here and I saw architects, um, this is for fourth grade and all of the different things that they need to do. So they have ceramics, fiber art, construction, mixed media, installation art, digital art and media, photographic imagery. Uh, so they have to take pictures too, using a variety of art, media, and materials. So these are ones that for sure you need to know a little bit about, right? Have a working knowledge. Um, Remember I told you ceramics, there are particular things and I think it's called scoring, like how you stick two pieces of clay together so that they stick um, when they're when you're like blending them together before you put them in thing. But we'll, let's look it up and not rely on my limited knowledge of art. So let's go to ceramics. What? Oh no. Oh, because it's looking in mine. Hold on. Ceramic. Oh. Orchids. So, um, the coil ceramic. Oh, I remember my daughter making me a coil ceramic. Uh, <laughs> all of the different, you know, reef kids egg carton fish that's pretty cool but how did they make this very very cool well i don't think that this is i'm gonna have to look it up later but i remember when my kids made me magnets and the, the teacher made some sort of paste and uh lots of different things you can do with ceramics but i am going to Oh, wow, this is beautiful and cheating because you get to use the mold, right? No, it's not cheating, but that is lovely. Um, ceramic techniques is what I want to see, tech. Uh, because remember, you need to know not just what it is. I mean, yeah, you know, with ceramics, you have little ideas. You need to know techniques and skills, a basic understanding of techniques and skills. pottery shapes. Oh, here it is. Scoring and slipping. Oh, I knew I remembered. And you see, I'm remembering from like sophomore year, which is ridiculous. 
but that's how good my art teacher was. So you, you, you create like hatch like things on one side and the other, and it, you know, you're able to sort of glue pieces together and it, it does glue. It's pretty crazy. Then you fire it up. Um, so slipping is what you create and, and to create slip, you, um, it's clay paste. So you, you take a chunk of clay and you pour water in it and you make it like mud, even like mud, um, like after it rains or something, you know, out there. And that's the glue in between it. And it works perfectly. Now that I'm thinking of how it works, I sort of see how it works. So, um, Slip is clay paste. The easiest way to make slip is to mix clay and water into a small dish. Use a brush to stir the clay and the water. As soon as you get a pasty, almost mud-like, the glue connects your um, pots. And it should be thick, like, like mud. Not watery mud, but like thick mud. Um, let's take a look. The techniques we will be learning in class. Clay, small brush, a knife, flexible mm -hmm. rib or cut up credit card, spoon, cloth. Oh, cloth, if you put cloth on wet clay, it makes like texture stuff. Um, so I guess this is things that you would need in order to, I don't know what grade level that is. Oh, there's also glaze. That's another step to, um, I think you add it. Uh, yeah, it makes pots waterproof, but I can't remember if you add it before you fire it or you fire it once you add it and you fire it again. I really don't. I don't remember what we glazed. Um, okay, I don't need to read that. I'm, uh, but we we probably should know like the firing process, which is here. I don't think we need to know the chemical process of the like this was a bit that was a bit much pottery knowledge kids craft yeah, there's different types of glazes i also have the pottery i made in high school and it's like just this little thing with like a a tapa, but when you bring out the tapa, it's like a little Mexican guy in there. The tapa is a sombrero. Um, and I had it with me even in college and somebody told me that that was kind of racist. I'm like, I'm Mexican. Like, I'm very proud. <laughs> like, <it's> hello. <laughs> like, Hi, but you didn't know he was up in there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we are. Uh, coil pots, types of coils, the different, I didn't realize there were different types of coils. And then there's six stages of clay so certainly look through this and and like i said make your notes you don't have to know everything you need like you don't have to have the memorize the chemistry of fi firing the kiln but you certainly need to know what slip is right or um you know if miss Villarreal's fifth grade art class came in to find many of um their clay pot additions had fallen off over the weekend and the children were sad about it and it's still wet clay. What would be the most appropriate next step for Ms. Villarreal to help her students fix the detached parts decoration to, her, to their clay models? What, and it would be to do better job scoring. If you don't do a good job scoring, even if you put the slip, it's gonna fall off. It has to be like, like cut in lines, like a hashtag over and over again, hashtag over and over again, so that when you put the slip and you press it together, it sort of reforms clay like it, like it was a whole piece. So if you just do very like not deep edges, you don't put that much, and then you put the slip, it's not good. It's not going to grab together. It has to sort of be fleshy where you where you score it. So the correct answer would be to review 
the scoring process and to rescore those pieces properly. Like all of the kids whose pieces fell off of their um, ceramics, um, it's because they didn't score properly. That that for sure is the reason. Or their slip uh, was too slippery. It wasn't um, gummy enough. I mean, it needs to be gummy like gross mud. Um, so that it creates a, like a glue. If it's very watery, it's not going to hold. And that would be the correct answer. All right, let's, let's go back to the teaks. We have mixed media installation art. And I think installation art is the ones where they do, um, do you guys have an idea of what installation is? Install, oh wait, it was right there. I think it's where they make like like mo like muebles like the mobile thing like the what is it called stew for kids see this is what i thought it would be like something that you install like you you hang up in the class and it becomes a permanent fixture Ombre experience, the study of color and installation. What? Two concepts in one. Definitely going to save this. Um, but yeah, you're doing like color, lighter, darker, different shapes even. And it's an ins this is an easy installation art thing that I'm going to do with my kids. Very, very cool. Um, That's kind of cool, this recycled art business. Is this plastic? There's so many ideas that you can, you know, utilize with your students, but installation art is, I guess, a, a collaboration and it becomes installed and a focal point. So like they worked on these, um, and this is another type of art, you know, what is it called? Origami. So everybody created a dove or a pterodactyl and then they hung them and installed them up, you know, somewhere, installation art. So you'd go back to your standards document and just jot down, you know, a little bit of what you learned or a summary. Um, we're just gonna do one more and then I have to go, but we're gonna look up mixed media to see any examples of mixed media for. Oh, I know, oh my goodness, that's so fun. Okay. So, Oversized cat and dog mixed media collages. So this lady saw it on elementary blog spot. Like teachers are the real MVP and they give all their ideas and stuff for free. This is beautiful. But it's like different pieces come together to create an image, um, almost like a collage, but it's mixed media because it looks like there's pieces of cardboard and this might be yarn, I can't really tell. Um, let's take a look at some more. So looks like we have paints and maybe watercolor, stamping, calligraphy, um, and other, you know, visual collage, I guess. Mixed media and you know collages are are very similar. You're right. Mixed media equals collage. <laughs> this is really cool and creepy a little bit, right? Like this one is my favorite. We did a really fun one um, when my 14 year old was in maybe kindergarten 
and it was mixed media but we decided it like they gave home you had to decorate your turkey um and so instead of just like coloring it we did mixed media so we cut out like all these different like I, I gave him a color we all worked on it like as a family like the whole family worked on it at the time there were only the three older ones but um we got magazines and I told like my daughter you're yellow you're red you're orange you're light orange and then we started cutting out cutting out different like pages and, and pieces and we we made a collage of different colors um made out of cut magazines and then my son went and uh drew the clothes on him and got like different cutouts to do jeans and all this different stuff like it was very very cute and to date one of my favorite projects that he had to do um look this is where they they're creating themselves but the my intern last year did it for um maybe she got it from here oh my god maybe she's not a genius and she stole it from pinterest no she still was a genius she executed it amazing let me look up tim burton art project hey kids let us see maybe <gasps> our stuff here I, I'm gonna find the pictures but um that's not her hers were amazing and they were all those aren't even as good as her students I'm gonna find the picture for you because I know I have it in my iPhone but I have 44,000 pictures in my iPhone so it's like so hard for me to find a picture maybe she did invent it it was amazing um this is very cool you know doing portraits and having this and having them put it on like a page very very cool for kids to do I remember my daughter doing watercolor technique and bringing home the paper like her little watercolor paper so cute Honestly, the better job the art teacher does or the teachers do connecting these things, like it's like little presents, tokens or memorabilia for the parents forever to come. I still have all my kids stuff, unless it broke during one of our moves, but. Art projects, this is amazing. There's also that art um, where you scratch, the scratch art, I, I forget what it's called. And um, you can act, actually make it with the kids. Do the, although it does use a lot of crayon because you have to like color with crayon behind it. And then <laughs> I forget what you put on top. It might be paint. But then you scratch. Oh yeah, it is paint. And then you scratch off um, what you want. But this is fun for the kids to do. And I did this in, uh, we did this in high school. Look, you can do it on a um, paper plate. All right, guys. Well, that was the end of um, the art. And I'll, I'll, I'll post this one and I'll put it as art. Last time I put fine arts, but I need to do another one for music. We'll look at some music concepts. I want for you to continue. Um, and you don't have to do it right now if you're working on another subject area. So if you're currently working on um, English language arts and reading, Elizabeth, don't worry about that. Just continue with what you're doing. And um, later <laughs> when you go and you're studying for the art portion, just go back and rewatch this video and make sure that you continue to go through all of the standards. We only looked at standard two, which was original artwork and, and like that building of creativity and um, uh, their skill and technique competency so that they can get enjoyment from creating original works of all sorts of art, right? Um, we only did one standard. I need you to do all the standards and, and do all the grade levels um, in the TEKS, right? In this way where you investigate and you take notes um, and then make sure that you write down any questions too, like, you know, 
get anything that you have, like maybe you need expansion or you don't know what it would look like, jot it down and we'll go over it next time. All right. Cool. All right. Sounds good, ladies. You have a wonderful rest of your day and a Thank beautiful you. weekend. And I Bye. will see you again soon. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.